Well, hello, 1P, and we're talking about angles in polygons today, any kind of a polygon, um, and we're going to tell you the difference between just a polygon and a regular polygon. So our goal is I know the relationship between the number of degrees in a polygon and its number of sides. So we're talking about the interior angles of a polygon. Tomorrow we'll talk about the exterior angles of a polygon. Um, so we'll uh, talk first. We know that all of the interior angles in any triangle add up to 180 degrees. Any triangle. As long as it has three sides and it's a closed figure, makes it a triangle and we know that if I add up those three angles in there I get 180 degrees. Now we're going to use an applet to fill in the rest here uh, and you can go to that applet too if you want. I don't know that it will work so much well on the iPads um, but I've got it up here so you can go and play with it if you want to. Um, I'm going to click on it and just show you what that applet looks like. Uh, so here it comes. So here's the applet. Now it's got a five, um, a five-sided polygon here, and it's a five-sided regular polygon. See how this little thing is checked right here to say that it's regular? Regular means that all five sides are the same. So if I want to go less than that, um, a regular four-sided polygon is a square, okay? Um, and a square has 90 degrees in the corners, and so if we add those four corners, those four 90 degrees we get, or multiply by four, we get 360 degrees in a four-sided figure. Now it doesn't have to be a regular polygon, the same as when we did with triangles. If I go down to a triangle, it doesn't have to be a regular triangle, it doesn't matter the size of the triangle. Take a look at all those numbers changing. These are the three angles in the triangle. When I move the triangle around, those three angles change like crazy, but they're always adding up to 180 degrees. That's kind of a cool little applet to see all of that kind of go But notice that all of those things are changing, but the sum is not. So what happens if I go to four-sided? This is no longer a square. Now I can change, change these sides to be what I want them to be. Um, and notice what's the sum staying at this time? 360, the same as it was when it was a square. So I can bring it back to being the square. So 360 degrees for the interior angles of a four-sided polygon, which we call a quadrilateral. So a four-sided polygon has 360 degrees in it. Okay, do we see any kind of pattern coming up yet? No, nah, we haven't gone far enough to see a pattern. Let's take a look at another one. Let's go up more to a five-sided polygon. Okay. This is a regular five-sided polygon called a pentagon. Five sides is penta. Um, and I can make this big and small and do whatever I want, but notice that that 108 degrees in each corner stays the same. Ooh, I can make a big... Okay, I can spin it. Doesn't matter. It's always 540 degrees. Now, does it matter if it's not a regular polygon? Let's tick off that regular box. Uh, now, it's still a pentagon but now the side lengths and the angles are not all the same. So I can start moving around these angles and notice it does not matter. Doesn't matter one little bit. It's still adding up to 540 degrees. Doesn't even matter if I pull one, one side length in like that. As long as you measure this one in here and it's, this is bigger than 180 degrees so it has the name of a reflex angle. Um, but still all of the inside angles add up to 540 degrees. So let's add that to our chart. 540 degrees. Um, let's go to the next one. More. There's a six sided figure. I don't have to play with this too much. We can just take a look. That's 720. And if I click regular it divides that 720 up into all six of those angles. Now this is called a hexagon with the six angles in there, but 720 degrees. And let's just go get the other information here. Um, let's go to an uh, sorry, a septagon, um, which has seven sides. It has 900 degrees in it. Um, then we'll go to the eight-sided one, which hopefully everybody knows the stop sign is called an octagon. So there's our octagon. It has a 1080. 
degrees in it. And the last one in here is the nine-sided nonagon, um, 1260. Now, can you come up with a rule to use for any number of sides? Now, I don't mean just keep adding on to here. What if I said, how many angles, uh, what do the angles add up to in a hundred-sided polygon? You wouldn't want to carry this um, on for a hundred sides. Let's see if you can come up with an answer. Now, what I would suggest is that you put me on pause and then you think about it for a little bit. So, put me on pause, think about it, see if you can come up with it. I'm going to wait, but not too long. Uh, because I'm, I want you to put me on pause. And I'm going to assume that you have already put me on pause and now you're back. And now I'm going to talk about um, what kind of rule we can have. Hopefully you noticed that what we did here was we went up 180 degrees every time. So every time I add a side, I have to add another 180 degrees. Now when we were looking, oh, that looks like 186. It's 180. We add 180 degrees every time. So the first differences are 180 degrees. And you're going, oh my god, I thought we were done with linear relations. Nope, not quite. Uh, remember when we studied linear relations? Uh, we were able to come up with some sort of an equation. Uh, let's say that our number of sides are n and our total degrees is a capital D. So we want to come up with a formula for capital D and it has something to do with 180 because 180 is our rate of change. It's going up 180 every time our side length goes up by 1. So here's our rate of change, 180n. Now it's 180n but what was our beginning because our beginning we started at 3 here. Well we went back uh, if we go back a little bit, we're going to go back into the negatives. 180n, if we go back to 2, to 0, and to 1, we can see that that is subtract. We'll have to subtract 180 from here three times because we subtract 180 once to get to two sides which doesn't make any sense because you can't have a polynomial with two sides. Um, but if we subtract 180 once, we get to zero. And that would be for two sides. And then we have to add, subtract 180 two more times to get to zero sides. And so 180 minus 360, because that's what I get if I take here and I go backwards through my chart. 180n minus 360, where this is our rate of change and this would be our initial value. Although we don't have the initial value on here because we got to backtrack, we've got to go back a couple of spaces. Now, there's another way that you could have looked at it, and here's the other way you could have looked at it. Say, well, I have to add 180 every time, but I started at 180. So let's say this was 1, then this would be 1 times 180. And let's say this was 2, then this would be 2 times 180. And let's say this was 3, then this would be 3 times 180. So if that's the case, then what I have to do to get the number of degrees, I'm going to leave this in green, is I have to take, look at the difference between these two numbers. I have to take the number of sides and subtract 2 and then multiply that by 180. So there's two different ways that we can look at it here. The rate of change and then going back to find the initial value which is negative. Or we can look at it that I had the pattern is that I have to take two less than this to and multiply it by 180. Okay so whichever one of these you think you can remember better two less and multiply by 180 is probably the one I would choose. So we've only got three examples to go through here and the first thing I want here I want you to notice um, what a regular polygon is. Um, a regular polygon has all sides and all angles the same, exactly the same. And so we're going to be looking at regular polygons um, in some cases. So example number one, calculate the missing angle. Uh, so we've got this missing angle right here, this C value is missing. 
Uh, now, this is a four-sided figure. So if this is a four-sided figure, we can look up here and say, I know a four-sided figure has to have 360 degrees. If you don't remember what a four-sided figure has, uh, hopefully, and I don't expect you to memorize all of those, although a four-sided figure is pretty straightforward. It's just double a triangle. Um, you could say, I'm going to take the four sides and subtract two, uh, and then multiply that answer by 180. So that's two times 180, or 360 degrees. So since this is a, and a four-sided figure is a quadrilateral, it has 360 degrees. So now that we know it has 360 degrees, we're going to calculate C. Uh, all of these have to add up to it, so I'm just going to do 119 plus 119 plus 61. And that gives me 299 degrees. And so if that's 299 degrees, I have to subtract this from the 360, because I know it's a total of 360, so that'll give me what C is left over. So 360 minus 299 equals 61 degrees. Now, since these two sides here are the same and these two sides here are the same, this thing has another name. It's called a parallelogram, um, but we're not going to get into that too much. Okay, the next one says a loony is a regular 11-sided polygon. What is the measure of each angle inside the loony? Well, first we have to figure out an 11-sided polygon. Now, we could add 180 two more times here, but let's use this formula. Let's take a look at that. That formula said the number of degrees equals the number of sides subtract 2 times 180. So the number of sides subtract 2 is 11 minus 2, and then we're going to multiply that by 180. 11 minus 2 is 9, multiplied by 180. I don't expect you to know that off your top of your head. You can type in 180 times, whoops, not times, 9 times 9 is 1620. Now, since this is a regular polygon, it did say regular, it means that all of these 11 angles are going to be exactly the same. So what I need to do is to split up this amount into 11 equal angles. And the way you split something up into equal parts in math is to use the term, use the operation of division. So each angle and I'm going to use this symbol for angle. Each angle is going to equal um, 1620 divided by 11. And I'm just going to add some things here. This is the total angles, total of angles from over here. Um, and it's being divided by the number of sides. And you are going to use this anytime you're talking about a specific angle in a regular tri a regular polygon. So we're going to divide this by 11 and we get 147.3 approximately. So we're going to say approximately 147.3 degrees in each angle. Next, for the following parallelogram, determine the missing angles. Now, parallelogram has lots of equal angles in it. Um, we know that this here and this here, now this is a parallelogram. Remember your work with parallel lines? I can draw this out here and I know that these two things here are forming the backward C pattern. So I know that those two things um, are going to add up to 180 degrees. Um, the, that's what the C pattern tells us. So to find K, I can use 180 degrees minus 48. Can you do that in your head? 180 degrees minus 40 would be 140. Then I have to take away 8 again, so that's 132. 
So K is 132 degrees. Now since this is a parallelogram and then these sides are parallel, these two things over here, now this isn't really using our four-sided uh, rule here, this is using other things that we've known. Um, these two angles here are also part of a C pattern because they're between parallel sides as well. So since they're between parallel sides, they also have to add to 180 degrees. Um, and parallelograms have that property that these angles here are going to be the same as these angles here. That's a property of parallelograms because there's so many nice parallel lines. So J is going to equal 48 and H is going to equal the same thing as K, 132 degrees. Okay. And that concludes this video.